The transfiguration, when this event took place, it had to have been absolutely overwhelming to those three who were there, the three eyewitnesses. Peter even refers to it in his letter that we heard from today. I saw it with my own eyes. We can never underestimate the power of the the eyewitness, those who saw the Lord uh, not just preaching and then healing and walking on water and calming the storm and Uh, but also transfigured, crucified, and resurrected. Three witnesses. Now, when when they heard this story in the first place, or or this experience took place, or it was told afterward, it was an obvious connection to Moses taking three witnesses with him up Mount Sinai where God was manifest before them, and they also were awestruck. But Jesus is saying something greater than Moses is here. And there he is in glory. And who should appear with him but Moses and Elijah. And and again, this would not be lost on those listeners. Moses and Elijah, why those two? Well, Moses is considered the author of the law, the Pentateuch. You know, it's a traditional understanding. Actually, it was a very diverse set of authors that uh, compiled, that put together or wrote the the bits and pieces that became the Pentateuch, the five first books of the, of the Bible. But Moses is a, represent, a symbol of that, of the, the law. And then the prophets, the writing of the prophets, uh, Elijah, uh, although he isn't the one who wrote the most, uh, there's no book of Elijah, but he's, he's referred to. There are other prophets who wrote more, but he's the one who, uh, his, his life, his actions, the miracles, his his uh, sign of the presence of God in Israel, up against all odds, you know, when he's uh, sometimes arguing against the king and, and Jezebel, his wife, the queen, and, and uh, one time goes up against, you know, a hundred, over a hundred of the prophets of Baal, but the one true God, the one true God and his one solo prophet were triumphant, you know. So, so he's that symbol of the of the. Uh, tenacious presence of God in the community of Israel. So the law and the prophets, which also is a liturgical thing. You know, we have the readings today, usually Old Testament, something from the Psalms, a a New Testament reading, the gospel. There's a structure to every uh, liturgy, liturgy of the word. Well, so was there in the synagogue service, and what they always, always listened to was a reading from the law and a reading from the prophets. So, so by Jesus appearing with Moses and Elijah, it's also a, a culmination of all their years in their life of praise and worship, of, of uh, adoring God and learning in the synagogue about the ways of God, and now Jesus is appearing. You know, it's sort of a, 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 a micro or a snapshot of, of what synagogue, what worship, what true fidelity to the God of Israel is about, and Jesus is the fulfillment of that now the Son of God. But why else is this so important? Because 40 days later, they're going to see Jesus dragged through the streets. They're going to see him hunted down before that and his life uh, on the line you know, with, with death threats. And they know that. They know that. They're fully aware of that as they go to Jerusalem. In fact, uh, the, the apostles try to talk Jesus out of going to Jerusalem. Why would we go there? They'll, you'll be killed. You know, they, know, they can see the, read the writing on the wall. But, they, but Jesus sets his face uh, towards Jerusalem. That's where his mission is going to be accomplished in his passion, death, and resurrection. Uh, but but, but uh, this transfiguration takes place 40 days before so that when they see him treated so poorly, when they see him crucified and when they're tempted to think all is lost, it's over, it was a failure, nothing came of this. When they're feeling that despair, they have to go, but wait a minute. We saw him transfigured in glory. We saw him with Moses and Elijah. Somehow, somehow, he will be victorious. You know, we need those moments in our own lives as well. This, I think, is, is something we do. Uh, we celebrate the sacraments with great style and form. You know, as a, a, a child being baptized and try to have some event around that, or First Communion, make a big deal even out of reconciliation. 
or an ordination of a priest, you know, everybody shows up in weddings, you know, and couples are transfigured, you know, in beautiful outfits that they never wear any other day of their life. <laughs> but, but to be transfigured and remember the beauty of that moment because that's true of who we are. And then when we go through the crosses in our lives, like Jesus, you know, he suffered on the cross for us, that's also true. And the resurrection is also true. All of these truths can be held together and so when we face our crosses, we also remember, yeah, the transfiguration is also true. The resurrection is also true. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is also true. All those things that, that sustain us in faith. So this was a gift provided for the apostles to sustain them through the days of the cross. So may we find those, those, uh, those elements of faith, but also our own spiritual experiences, our own moments of glory in, the, in celebrating sacraments where we encounter the glory of the Lord, and, and especially and in, in always in this Mass, Christ present in the Eucharist. May those be the things that sustain us during the cross so that we may see Christ present in all those aspects of our lives. And, and may that be our hope. Frankly, I think even on a daily basis, and i just end with this, that's the value of daily prayer. In fact, I even think it's better to have it earlier in the day than later in the day uh, for, that, for that time to be centered in Christ so then as we go through our day, we remember who we are and who Jesus is for us.